So, you know, a couple of things have changed. A lot of things are staying the same as we had before. Obviously, we're separated and all that. Communion will still operate the same way. You come up. I'll hand you a wafer if you could come over here, the designated cross place. Take your mask off. Eat your wafer. Put your mask on. Sanitize your hands. Go back to your pews. That would be great. I think what we'll do next for next week is we're going to remove the choir pews so that people can kind of go on the outside back to their pews instead of going up the middle aisle all the time. So just... Just to tell you that's going to happen. Um, our Ash Wednesday service should be going on on March the 2nd at 7 p.m. here in the church. It will be Holy Eucharist followed by the imposition of ashes. We didn't do it last year, so we'll do it this year. Hello, everyone. It's World Day of Prayer time once again. World Day of Prayer is traditionally held the first Friday of March, this year, March the 4th. Uh, we are looking at England, Wales, and Northern Ireland this year. Unfortunately, we won't be meeting as a community because of COVID restrictions, but the service can be found online. All you have to do is Google it. Um, on March the 4th, it will also be on television on the Yes channel on Saturday, March the 5th. The first service will be at 8 a.m. and there'll be a second service at 9 a.m. That's the Yes channel. And for those who don't catch it online or see it on television, we will be having uh, a screening of the service 
at our first ACW meeting of the year. We're not quite sure when that's going to happen, but everyone is invited to come and see the screening of our first ACE at our first ACW meeting. We will of course be socially distancing, so stay tuned and we'll let you know when that's going to happen. What's going on? Our annual investor meeting will be in two weeks. It'll be on Zoom as it was last year. Our investor reports will be available, both electronic versions and physical paper versions if you want. And if you're on our mailing list, email list, you will get a link to the Zoom meeting and then you can come in. It'll probably be about 1.30 in the afternoon in a couple weeks because we'll still have the 12 o'clock service. So just to tell you that. And most of you will already realize if you look in your mailboxes that the uh, tax receipts are in. And uh, Ken wants me to remind you to check the address on your envelopes, make sure it's the right address, P.O. box and all of that stuff. And if the totals are right or wrong, Ken loves to get calls from people about that. Don't you, Ken? Yes, I do. Yeah? <laughs> so anyway, uh, he likes to get them early in the morning when he's up. So, you know, five, six o'clock is the best time to catch them. I have a secretary that's up at four in the morning. Yeah, I know, yeah. yeah. Don't call me at four in the morning. It's not gonna be pretty uh, for anybody. Anyway, so there you go. So today uh, we are gonna have hymns and we're going to sing as well. So we're allowed to sing. Um, however, um, I won't be taking my mask off through the service as you might already tell and neither will the readers. So that's sort of the way it goes. So we're kind of a trade off a little bit. So hi Bonnie, hi Paul. Hello. So anyway, so uh, we'll, we'll see how this goes. I think it'll go very well. I am excited to be back. It's uh, still a little bit strange, but it's exciting to be back and I'm great, I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful, I'm so happy to have you all here. Uh, so our processional hymn is number 381 in your blue hymn books. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven, number 381.
Jonas Books, page 185. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Go ahead. <laughs> Glory to God in the their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert, and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness, in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart, to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
poem appointed for this morning is Psalm number one. You can find it on page 705 in your green service books. Psalm number one on page 705. It's only six verses, and so we might as well just say it all together. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither, Everything they do shall prosper. And not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is new. Giver of life, save us from the desert of faithfulness and nourish us with the living water of your word that we may bring forth fruit that will last. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now the second reading. Because we testify of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel graduate hymn is number 486. Love divine, our love excelling. And we'll sing the first two verses before the gospel and verse three afterwards. Number 486.
our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. He came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all of Judea, Jerusalem, the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all the crowd who were trying to touch him for power came out of him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> If you're faster, if you're stronger, if you can do more things, then you're considered to be successful, right? You're considered to be more desirable. You're considered to be someone we want to be around. The gospel today does not say that. And for some of you, this might be really bad news. If you're full, if you're rich, if you're content, you're going to have trouble later. See, what Jesus is trying to do is tell his disciples what he's trying to tell us is that it's not about those things that we value that God values, right? So you're faster than other people. God really doesn't care. So you can jump higher than other people. So what? So you're stronger than other people. Okay. Jesus doesn't really care. And this is what I think sometimes that we miss. Sometimes as Anglicans, as Canadians, we miss. Is that the gospel is hope for people. The gospel is good news for those who need it. And so when we think that we don't need it because we're faster, we're stronger, we can jump higher, then we miss the point of what the gospel is really about. Jesus comes to us and he comes to his disciples and he says, see these people here who come to me for healing? The rest of society thinks that they're no good. The rest of society in the time of Jesus, the rest of society would consider them to be worthless because they're sick because they can't work, because they're weak, because they don't look good. They're not desirable. And so the rest of society sort of shoves them away. But that's not what the gospel is about. These are the people, said Jesus, and he pointed, these are the people that the kingdom of God is for. They're the ones who are hungry. They're the ones who are homeless. They're the ones who are sick. They're the weak. That's who the kingdom of God is for for people who need to hear the gospel message. So what does that mean for us, right? As Canadians, as people who 
are the top 5% of the wealthiest people in the world who have food on the shelves, who are able to do a lot of stuff. It doesn't mean that we're doomed, but it means we have to realize that in those things that Jesus talks about, we are those who are sick, we are those who are hungry, we are those who weep. Because we are with those who have no hope. We must be with them, we must advocate for them, we must love them, we must welcome them. We must gather them up in our arms as Jesus did with those people and bless them. Bless them with whatever we can. And when we do that, then we can truly see what it is to be people in the body of Christ and look for the kingdom of God. Think to yourself if there's any time in your life when you have felt alone or weary or sick or ignored or less than other people. Imagine feeling that all the time. Imagine all the time feeling hungry, all the time feeling less than everyone else, all the time feeling sick. These are those that the kingdom of God is for. Their hope is in the body of Christ. It is in Jesus. And so therefore, it needs to be in us as well. We have not only a great blessing, but a great responsibility to share with those who need it, to help those who are sick, to help the poor, the needy, to help those who cannot help themselves, to use our voice to do what we can for them, to lift them up, and to make them realize indeed that as people who believe in Christ, as people who are part of the body of Christ, we're not in it for ourselves. We're in it for them. We are called through our faith and through our heart to minister to them. And amazingly enough, when we do that, they fill us. They minister to us at the same time. The last couple of weeks, and if you've watched the online services, and I know all of you have many times, it's true. Um, what, what we, I talk about is our, our history of St. Paul's, our 150th, what have we done over the years? I like to think that we're perfect, but we're not. But the fact is that for that time, we have been a beacon of Christianity and love of God in this place. Not in this physical building, although that's true, but in the community that surrounds us. We have advocated for those who are poor. We've advocated for those who are homeless. We've advocated for those who feel less than them. We need to continue to do that. Now, we haven't always been perfect. We haven't always done everything that we could have done. But it doesn't mean we stop trying, and it certainly doesn't mean that we quit. What it means is that we have to do better. What it means is, just like Jesus' disciples, who constantly have to be told what's going on, we have to remind ourselves that we can do more. We have to remind ourselves that as the body of Christ in this place, we're commanded, we're tasked with helping others. We expand our ministry and our love, because that's what we're commanded to do. And when we do that, when we do all of those things, then we live out the gospel that Jesus preaches. We live out what it is to be Christians, what it is to be believers. In the history of our church, we've, we've tried as best we can to gather together those sorts of stories and things that we have done in ministry that allow us to be encouraged, that allow us to be bumped up, that allow us to be strong for the time to come. Because there's always some new ministry on the horizon, right? There's always something new that goes on. And so I'd ask you that as we enter this 150th year, or we're in the 150th year, that we think about what it is to be a beacon of Christianity in this place. What it is to be the representatives of Christ in this community and the communities around us. What is it that we can do to welcome those others into the body of Christ? How do we minister to others? so that we indeed can be filled as well in our faith. And when we do that, we live out the gospel that Jesus tells us about. They gathered that day because they needed something from him. All they wanted to do was just touch his robe, and they felt they would be healed. Do people come to us and say, if only I was in their presence, I would feel God. If only I was in their presence, I would see what it's like to have hope and good news. Mm -hmm. That is what we need to strive for. That is what we need to do. Let us be encouraged by our history, but let us also reach forward 
and discover new ministries and new people to add to the body of Christ. Amen. Service continues on page 189 in your green service books with the Apostles' Creed. Page 189. Will the congregation please stand? Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please turn to page 120 in your great service books. Lady number 13. Page 120, litany number 13. In joy and humility, let us pray to the creator of the universe, saying, Lord, grant us peace. By the good news of our salvation brought to Mary and her angel by an angel, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the mystery of the word made flesh, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the birth and time of the timeless Son of God, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the manifestation of the King of glory to the shepherds and the magi, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the submission of the maker of the world to Mary and Joseph of Nazareth, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the baptism of the Son of God in the river Jordan, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. In our prayers, we've been asked to pray for Lily, Tom, Ernie, Joe, Carol, Joan, Judy, Charlotte, Karen, Maddie, Stephanie, Linda, Reese, all those living in long-term care homes, and for those who are known to you alone. Grant that the kingdoms of this world may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. And we continue on page 191 in your great service books with the confession and absolution. Page 191. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting them to this holy table. Let us now confess our sins, confident in our Lord's eternal forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we come to repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us stand in exchange of peace with one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Story hymn is 508 in your blue hymn box. I heard the voice of Jesus say, number 500.
sufferers, receive all we offer in this day. Turn our sickness into health and our sorrow into joy. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Service continues on page 204 in your great service book with Eucharistic Prayer number 5. Your great service books, page 204. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, for the gift of a world full of wonder, and for our life which comes from you. By your power, you sustain the universe. Glory to you forever and ever. You created us to love you with all our hearts and to love each other as ourselves. But we rebel against you by the evil that we do. In Jesus, your Son, you bring healing to our broken world and gather us into one great family. Therefore, with all who serve you on earth and in heaven, we praise your wonderful name as we sing. This is my body, which is given for you. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. He said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which is shed for you and for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Glory to you, Gracious God, with this bread and wine, we celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus, and we offer ourselves to you in him. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that we may know the presence of Jesus in the breaking of bread, and share in the life of the family of your children. Glory to you, forever and ever. Father, you call us to be your servants. Fill us with the courage and love of Jesus, that all the world may gather in joy at the table of your kingdom. We sing your praise, Almighty Father, through Jesus our Lord, and the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Glory, Glory to you, forever and ever. Amen. We continue on page 211. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now, page 213, fractional sentence number six. We break the bread of life, and that light is the light of the world. God, hear our hearts. Light in the midst of us, bring us light and life. These are the gifts of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God. I think as we've done before, just before we went off again online, 
You can figure out where you are in the pecking order of coming up, so just come up when you feel you need it. Service continues on page 214 in your green service books. Will the congregation please stand in prayer? Page 214. God of tender care, in this Eucharist we celebrate your love for us and for all people. May we show your love in our lives and know its fulfillment in your presence. 
We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And glory to God. Whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God, generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Blessed God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Our recessional hymn is number 306 in your green and your blue hymn books. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, number 306. Mm -hmm. 